The board today, as I was attempting to set up, was from the game 13 that he played against Boris Spassky in the 1972 championship. This uh, particular position on the chessboard was considered an enigma. Bobby Fischer has a, his only major piece trapped, but he was still major, able to pull out a major win against the greatest chess player in the world at the time, the world champion. And they look at this as just a symbol of his brilliance. If you're a chess player, I'll leave this set up. You can take a look at it afterwards. Bobby Fischer also had a dark side. And the idea of the talk came not to give you a history of lessons on the history of chess, but to understand how somebody who could be such a great, great chess player had such incredible skill could have offered many years of, of analytical contributions to the game. How could this man live and die the way he did? He became very paranoid. He was not known for biting his tongue. Matter of fact, I copied down some quotes. I wanted to just share with you some of the sides of Bobby that you may not have known. These are quotes that he made. Is it against the law to kill a reporter? <laughs> um, I like the moment when I break a man's ego, was another quote. When they asked him about John Kennedy, if he had voted for John Kennedy, he said, I don't think so. I don't like to see millionaires in there. You know, he's too soft. I don't think he's ever had any hardships. Besides, he doesn't have any class. He puts his hands in his coat pockets. God, that's horrible. <laughs> Some of his more outrageous statements. You don't learn anything in school. It's just a waste of time. You lug around books and do all the homework. They give you too much homework. You shouldn't be doing homework. Nobody's interested in it. The teachers are all stupid. They shouldn't have any women in there. They don't know that much how to teach. And they shouldn't have anybody go to school. You don't want to, don't, you don't want to go to school, don't go. It's all ridiculous. I don't remember one thing I learned in school. I don't listen to wikis. My two and a half years at Erasmus High, I wasted. I didn't like the whole thing. You have to mix with all those stupid kids. And the teachers are even stupider than the kids. They talk down to the kids. Half of them are crazy. If they let me in, I had to quit before I was 16. This is the one that really jumped out at me. She and I just don't see eye to eye. She's a square. She keeps telling me that I'm too interested in chess, that I should get friends outside of chess. You can't make a living from chess. That I should finish high school with all that nonsense. She keeps in my hair, and I don't like people in my hair, you know. So I had to get rid of her. Bobby Fisher speaking about his mother. I did like this quote. I found this quote quite profound. Our mind is all we've got. Not that it won't lead us astray sometimes, but we still have to analyze things within ourselves. And this was uh, the last quote I'll share you. They're all weak, all women. They're all stupid compared to men. They shouldn't play chess, you know. They're like beginners. They lose every single game to a man. There isn't a woman player in the world I can't give a night odds to and still beat. So you can see this man certainly had a very a challenged character, to say the least. He also was very anti-Semitic. He could not stand the fact that he was born uh, into a, a Jewish family. Uh, he denounced the fact that he was a Jew because he had never been circumcised. And he, he st stuck to that claim to the day. He hated Jewish people. And in the end of his life, he hated Americans. And he hated everything that America stood for. And so he went into exile after his world championship match in 1972. And no one could figure out why, but he had, he had this idea of how things should be. He was so attached to 
this is how things should be and I'm not going to take anything less. So when it came time for his rematch with the then would-be challenger Anatoly Karpov in 1975, he laid out 78 demands of the world, governor, uh, world governing body of chess. It was an organization called FIDE. And he, he made 78 demands. And FIDE relented to 77 of them. And he balked. He walked away. He said, I won't do it unless you meet all my demands. He was very controlling, very obsessive on how things should be. He was also a very paranoid individual. He was convinced that the Russians were wanting to kill him because he had taken their title away. He was convinced. He was also a guy who was very staunch in his what he thought was right. And so when he did come out of exile in 1992, and he actually had a rematch with Boris Spassky in 1992 in Yugoslavia, <laughs> and at the time the Yugoslavian government were people who were under a U.S. embargo. We could not do any business with Yugoslavia. So the U.S. Treasury Department sent an order to him uh, denying him the right to play this match and telling him that if he played this match that he would be in violation of U.S. law and that he would be incarcerated uh, immediately or under the, his return to the United States. So what did Bobby Fischer do? He took the U.S. order and in front of public cameras spit on the U.S. order as a retaliation and he threw it away and from that point forward he never re-entered the United States. He lived for a while in Hungary, he lived for a while in the Philippines, he lived for a while in Japan and what happened in Japan was he was traveling on an expired passport and immigration finally caught up with him in Japan. And they incarcerated him said your passport's expired, I'm sorry Mr. Fisher but you can't you can't travel unless you have a current passport. It was at that point that he renounced his U.S. citizenship. Ended up a man without a country. So Iceland, which was the scene and the set of his world championship match in 1972, was gracious enough to offer him unconditional citizenship to their country. And so the last years of his life he lived in Iceland, in Reykjavik, and uh, he died of kidney failure at the age of 64 uh, in January of 